It's my great honor and pleasure to be here uh, to introduce Toyo Bunko today. And also, looking back, the original starting background of this Morrison Lecture series, and also uh, a sort of uh, motivation to start uh, Morrison Lectures. It's uh, maybe a different period and also very nation state level. But today I am on behalf of Toyo Bunko and Morrison Collection, I try to confine my report of the Morrison Collection 100 years in Toyo Bunko and how we studied and studying Morrison Collection. And personally, I have uh, one a sort of mission to ask you, uh, who is the next Morrison from Australia? <laughs> I try to find uh, who is the next Morrison, how to find the next Morrison, because the positioning of Australia in world history in the past and now is very important for us think, to think about the formation of the world and Asia and regions. So uh, this is another uh, opportunity and also uh, very important uh, timing uh, for Toe Bunko to discuss and establish the further development of uh, a sort of research uh, exchange of communication and uh, study of Morrison Collection. And today I, uh, I try to uh, introduce uh, Toyo Bunko, particularly the part of Morrison Collection. And uh, we, as uh, Professor Claire Robert explained, uh, we celebrated 100 years of Morrison Collection last year, which means uh, 1917, uh, Iwasaki Hisaya uh, bought uh, Morrison Collection and then reached uh, Tokyo. And then 1924, Toyo Bunko uh, was established by him based on uh, Morrison Collection and uh, Iwasaki Hisa collection. And later I, I try to explain his history. He graduated from Pennsylvania University and he also had interest of insects. And uh, he, after the president of Mitsubishi Company, he established the Toe Bunko as a private uh, library and uh, opened uh, Morrison Collection. And also the, the, the topic of title of today's talk includes museum. Uh, in the past uh, around 19 years, uh, Toebunko only has library and research. But 2011, uh, Toyo Bunko established a museum and a new building for both library and museum. It's a book museum and the book is mostly from Morrison Collection. And it's so uh, varieties and so beautiful uh, a collection. Uh, not only uh, history but also many cultural and also uh, other, uh, other fields including uh, painting, uh, maps and so on. So we need to develop more the study of Morrison Collection and also we need to uh, establish more across uh, academic tie between Australian scholars and Toyo Bunko. I'll start uh, my, 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 my talk. <clears throat> uh, when Morrison Collection uh, handed over to Iwasaki Hisaya. He, he, he told four conditions. 
to keep Morrison Library. Number one is to maintain completeness without separating any part of his collection. Number two is open to the public, open to the world. Number three, to continue to collect the serials and journals. The title of journal is more than 100, and including serials, maybe close to 200 titles. Number four, the collection is named George Ernest Morrison Library. And these four uh, Toebunko has been keeping under the same way, same condition. Of course, during 100 years, uh, Toebunko faced many difficulties, but to, to use Morrison Collection, these four, and to maintain Morris, Morrison Collections, these four conditions are still keeping as very basic discipline for Morrison Collection. So this is one biggest reason why uh, Ministry of Education also supported to maintain Morrison Collection and Toebunko Collection for Asian studies of the world. Now we are facing a uh, new challenge, uh, how to make digitized way and also how to set up many different uh, research project and also uh, besides book collection, the most particular, most peculiar characteristics of Morrison collection to me is more than three, uh, six thousand small pamphlets. He himself corrected by ordering publisher to send particular journal, particular number, and then after receiving the journal, he select the necessary part of the article and then put cover and write title and then put order according to the region. And this is most, uh, how to say, important and also for us exciting part of collection of Morrison, which has not been well introduced or well studied. And we are now endeavoring to study this pamphlet part. And it shows his period and also his way of collection and his way of announcing or establishing his idea on China, East Asia, Asia, and Europe, Asia relations, and the world issues. And also, collective collection is another very peculiar uh, part of Morrison collection, uh, such as uh, later I uh, explain detail, uh, something like Chinese maritime custom record. Uh, his, his collection is very complete. Uh, Chinese maritime custom report uh, scattered all over the world. Every library, every university has some part of this publication, but Morrison collected uh, from the start of 1862 to his stage uh, 1917, a complete set, and also consular report and parliamentary papers and these things. And this is very rich, intensive collection, which we learned a lot and still using, though digital world are expanding, but actually this original uh, document and original paper are very precious for us to study. Uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, National Library of Australia, the painting of George Ernest Morrison. Maybe this is the 50s, his 50s. And uh, 
if we summarize his attitude or his character or his uh, way of life, uh, I try to summarize by two or three words. One is Morrison's spirit. And he is an idealist who aimed at perfection. By looking Morrison's correction, we feel every time his attitude to correct very perfect and then arrange by his own classification. So that impressed us very much. Not only this attitude, but also the correction itself. What we read, it is very clear for us to understand by his correction. So he showed the range of uh, the issues from the start to the end. The second a sort of characteristic or description might be reflection of the period and reflection of the world at that period. From late 19th century to early 20th century is a period of very lively a sort of search of natural resources for industrialization and also railway construction and loan issues, and so on. So surrounding China, all over the world, uh, watched China, and then raised a sort of big agenda of China problem, including political economy, and also cultural history, and so on. So his collection reflects this kind of period very, very much. And also, his sort of uh, observation ranged all over the world uh, according main political issues in Asia and uh, Europe and North America. And also within Asia, uh, not only Southeast Asia, but also uh, Yunnan, <coughs> Kuito, that West South part of China, he connected uh, Southeast Asia and Yunnan route to the coast of China. So he traveled a lot and then uh, investigated many new things and then recorded and also under very wider uh, international relations perspective, he traced his uh, trip and uh, left many writings. And Morrison pamphlet uh, is the very methodical concentration because it's, it's very time consuming and very endeavoring energy to find out one particular article from many journals, publication, and then we found many receipts from publisher. Uh, Morrison ordered and then received and then put cover and wrote title and then classified according to the different regions. And this, all these things uh, suggested to me very strongly the idea of library. It's not just one person's purpose to know something. His idea of library is very strong, which means a sort of the balance of the topic or uh, structure of the uh, collection and classification. And his classification is based on region. And Toyobunko still keep his original classification and follows the study of Asia by his uh, regional classification. And this also means that his idea of library is very strong and very concentration to set up library. That is on the way of negotiation between uh, uh, Iwasaki Hisaya 
part and uh, Morrison part. It is very clear <coughs> and the four conditions to maintain the completeness of the Morrison collection reflects his idea of library. So by looking at his uh, detailed classification and also orderly arranged uh, a sort of uh, collections. We have very uh, variety of ideas of history studies, uh, not only political science, but also uh, economic history and cultural history and so on. So his collection and his library uh, always give us, whenever we look through his book stack, always gives us the new idea of history studies and new topic for further uh, development of studies. And I also have very strong interest in the Iwasaki part and he is not just a capitalist or not ju just uh, provide funding. He himself is a sort of uh, beyond entrepreneur. And this is his uh, family uh, photograph. And then I, I, I try to explain. Uh, this is a person, Iwasaki Hisaya, who, who bought Morrison collection. And uh, this is the uh, eldest daughter. And uh, Iwasaki Hisaya himself is uh, graduating Pennsylvania University. And this is a tradition of uh, Mitsubishi Company to send the next generation, a candidate of next president, to send either London or North America to study. And actually, current uh, director of uh, Toyobunko, uh, Makehara Minoru, Mr. Makehara Minoru, also studied in London University and a good friend with Professor Wang Kang Wu. So when I heard this relation, I, I, I couldn't understand what is the background. It's a sort of uh, Mitsubishi policy to a sort of uh, educate their uh, new generation abroad. And uh, Mr. Makehara also uh, met Professor Wang Kang Wu in London. And that, that is a sort of uh, history uh, of uh, both sides uh, to meet in London. And from 1903 to uh, 1893 to 1916, he's the president of Mitsubishi Company. And after retirement, 1924, he set up Toebunko. And then 1927, he opens his farm in Brazil. And also before that, he also opened farm in northeast part of Japan. So it's not just a sort of uh, business entrepreneur, uh, a sort of uh, different uh, direction or wider interest and so on. That makes him to, to, to hold uh, Morrison Collection in Tokyo. And uh, his eldest daughter, uh, Miki, is a uh, uh, open up an uh, orphanage after the Second World War to take care of the orphan during war, particularly 
the children between Japanese and American soldiers. And also some relation with Helen Keller uh, for uh, manage her uh, orphanage. So thinking about Iwasaki side or Mitsubishi side, uh, Morrison collection is not outside of their family. I think after uh, receiving Morrison collection, uh, Iwasaki and his wife enter the library every day and read Morrison collection. So they are very uh, strong relation, uh, interest of Morrison collection. I, I assume uh, by studying insects in Pennsylvania, uh, most probably he, he had a look on uh, Z-board uh, collection of uh, flowers and birds and animals uh, painting. This is one uh, uh, Iwasaki side is uh, not just fund provider. I think uh, much more uh, internal interest of Morrison collection related issues. Then China side, usually uh, Morrison himself expected to keep Morrison library in China. And one diary uh, by uh, Wen Wen Hao. Uh, he is the first PhD of geology and geography in Belgium, Louvain University, the old Louvain University in 1905. And he has been working on natural resources of China and then rather often visit Morrison Library, his diary wrote, and read many natural resources re related uh, articles and books. And he very strongly regretted the Morrison collection leave China. Of course, under many different uh, environment and under different conditions, we can't see the uh, history of Morrison collection in China. But if the intellectuals like Wen Wen Hao in China utilized, fully utilized Morrison collection to find out the geographical natural resources in China, maybe it's a different uh, aspect of uh, discussion or different aspect of international relation might appear. But anyway, uh, this diary of Wen Wen Hao, he has a long history and very important role of the history of China, uh, reveals the importance of Morrison collection. And uh, in 100th anniversary uh, symposium, uh, we invited from China uh, Professor Wan Jun of Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences History Institute. He traced how many Chinese scholars, intellectuals visited Toyobunko after Morrison collection moved to Tokyo. It's quite a few number, uh, more than uh, 1,000 intellectuals and scholars visit Toyobunko. And now also a very lively uh, relation with uh, Chinese scholars and uh, particularly the early 2000 
this century uh, by emphasizing the foreign intellectuals of Chinese studies. The one of typical uh, figure is uh, George Ernest Morrison. And during a few years' time, very short years' time, more than 400 articles on George Ernest Morrison in China appeared in, in, in mainland China, including uh, geography, uh, including uh, family history, including uh, north, uh, northwest part of the uh, trip and uh, south, southwest part of China trip, and so on. Uh, it also uh, showed us uh, further uh, sort of development of research network among scholars uh, in Asia and other, other, other world. Uh, special groups uh, in the characteristic of Morrison collection. He himself classified differently, not just uh, author's name, or alpha alphabetical order. One is missionary reports, uh, missionary journals. He set up uh, one big group. Then blue books, parliamentary papers. Uh, this include many detailed uh, uh, parliamentary papers relating to China. Of course, later we know uh, Professor Ian Nish <coughs> compiled uh, from Irish University Press uh, on, on China and Japan uh, altogether, 52 <coughs> volumes of parliamentary papers and consular reports. But uh, we, we can read original book, original parliamentary paper from Morrison Collection. And Commerce report is before starting consular report, there is a commerce report period, uh, early 19th century uh, from uh, Britain. So this follows, uh, we know, the ending period Southeast India companies, uh, East India companies, and newly starting maritime custom period, and also newly starting uh, consul period. So this commerce report uh, connect East India Company period and consular report period. And then consular report, not only China, but also Southeast Asia, particularly he was in Thailand for a couple of years. And uh, collect the consular report uh, from British side and French, from French side on Thailand. And this uh, Thai rice issue in the uh, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and Asia uh, becoming very important. And also, inland route to China also uh, became very important. He, he founds many uh, argument, uh, this, this, this consular report from Southeast Asia. And then China Maritime Custom Publication. Uh, this start uh, 1860s until uh, 1940s. And Morrison collected complete series until 1917 and then Toyo and other collection follows until uh, 49. So nowadays, uh, this maritime custom publication became one of the most important uh, sort of in very intense, intensified collection of modern China. Not only trade report, but also including some medical report and uh, postal office record. And those are starting, started from maritime customs. And then many custom officers entered 
postal office. For example, the French custom officer Piri, after uh, custom office, he entered postal office for the first uh, representative of uh, post office in modern China uh, in 1896 to 7. And his archive in uh, Ireland, uh, Queen's University archive. And now we are entering not the formal publication, but also entering the private record, including letters, diaries, and the writing of second generations. Uh, so we are now extending uh, our study of East Asia and Asia by entering uh, a sort of private record. And this is uh, very emphasized by uh, Professor Bickers of Bristol, Tash, Bristol University and also Professor Hans of Cambridge. They started uh, the second archive of Nanking, Nanjing and then organized China and the West, a big collection of microfilm. And keeping this uh, idea to enter more uh, private record relating to uh, maritime customs and others, uh, consular reports or uh, missionary reports. We are uh, collecting and also like uh, Benedict Anderson, Professor Benedict Anderson and Perry Anderson, his, their father is Yunnan Custom, uh, Monzu Custom officer. And these uh, two sons uh, try to find out the father's record in Nanjing, the second archive, but couldn't uh, enough, uh, couldn't have enough uh, record. And then try to go to Yunnan custom to find out the uh, history of his, their fathers. And we try to arrange, but uh, ben Anderson uh, passed away and Perry Anderson also uh, has some uh, ill. So this is not realized, but we found the second generation of custom uh, peoples has a lot of variety of social life history and other very interesting insight of their father's uh, record in the custom history. And Morrison pamphlet over 600 volumes is very peculiar uh, a sort of characteristics, characteristics of Morrison collection. I, I repeat again and again. And uh, we are now compiling and digitizing this pamphlet and history part mostly we digitize and upload through Toyobunko homepage URL. Then uh, Professor Claire Roberts also introduced Alastair Morrison collection. Uh, 1990s Alastair Morrison collection arrived and then based on original classification we compiled uh, a sort of catalog and then main collection is of course Borneo and Southeast Asia and not contemporary issues during his stay in Borneo but also very <coughs> historical background and very important uh, books and journals on Southeast Asia are uh, inside. So this is also uh, a, a sort of Morrison family collection. Uh, the Toyobunko has responsibility to open up much more uh, 
uh, easy way to use uh, digitization and uh, some research project to find out the importance of uh, Alastair Morrison collection and of course uh, George Ernest Morrison collection. And again, uh, uh, this is uh, our very uh, exciting occasion and very honor to uh, hear uh, Professor Claire Roberts' uh, very insightful talk in 100 years anniversary of uh, Morrison Collection, uh, the Morrisons of Peking, uh, which means not only uh, George Ernest Morrison and his family, but also uh, Alastair Morrison and Hedda Morrison and these collections. And uh, Professor Claire Roberts herself uh, in Harvard Yenchen and Harvard University worked on Hedda Morrison collection. So now Toyobunko is directing not only Morrison collection, based on Morrison collection, his family collection and relation, not only book and pamphlet, but also some uh, administrative report and also some painting and photograph and so on. Uh, we are uh, extending this study of Morrison collection. From here, I try to introduce briefly some very typical example of Morrison collection. One is Christianity uh, issues in East Asia. And uh, the first introduction of uh, Romanized uh, Japanese uh, in their publication, Doctrina Japanese. Uh, this is Amakusa area of Kyushu. Uh, Christian mission entered from that area and then published. And of course, maybe publication is either Macau or India or Europe, but we are now very keen to investigate the paper itself, the history of paper itself, by using very detailed scale of microscope uh, from uh, 200 uh, to 500, uh, we, can, uh, we can investigate the, the fiber of papers and then some other small things in the papers and then try to find where and where, when it is made. And because of the natural uh, a sort of growth of uh, woods for papers in East Asia, China and Japan. Toward the end of 18th century and early 19th century, the export of paper from East Asia very in, very enormous. And uh, that period, uh, Britain uh, put paper as uh, tax-free because 1830s, uh, England started to establish the local library. So before that, the usage of paper is mostly for Bible. But after that, for the public, the paper uh, is very important to import. So by exemplifying tax, uh, Britain imported Asian paper. That is very uh, obvious history. And when uh, British consulate established in Japan after opening up of Japan in 1868, 1871 uh, consulate uh, asked for Japanese other English consulate to investigate Japanese paper production and then reported over 260 places, different places in Japan, 
making their own local paper. And then among them, 80 kinds of <coughs> sample moved to London and still in the British Museum there. So paper during certain period is very important. And of course, we know the cotton textile is the symbol of industrial revolution. But cotton textile, the background is paper weaving, technology and way of doing uh, a sort of uh, working is the origin of cotton textile industry. Of course, not machinerized, but by putting paper industry and local industry before so-called industrial revolution, we might raise some different issue from East Asia through paper history. Mostly culturally very interesting. In the West, whereas in the West, the paper is not from the natural wood, but like a uh, rope of ships and uh, some uh, used uh, textiles and so on. So one is, in the West, the printing is rather late. And Gutenberg, for example, need to press very hard, otherwise paper, nature of paper is rather rough. So ink is not on, on it. Whereas in the East, paper is very smooth. So no need to develop the printing machine with high pressure. So maybe through this kind of historical relation. And Morrison Collection has from end of 14th century, 15th century to present. And Toibunko has uh, on almost all Asian papers. And one is to preservation of books and manuscript. One is to investigate the through papers, the cultural uh, sort of uh, different faces of uh, regional culture. We are now emphasizing to investigate the paper by microscope without damaging original paper. And sometime uh, in Europe, the Paper Association president came to Toibunko to explain from European paper, because of the uh, ship's rope, are uh, mostly uh, a stuff of paper weaving. So sometimes the uh, small uh, uh, how to say, uh, insects or animals are in the paper, which disappeared in the history. This kind of paper is keeping some history. So Toebunko, uh, usually, of course, we read the book and manuscript on the written word, but the paper themselves has their own history. And Toebunko has this kind of responsibility to preserve the Morrison collection and all the books. So we are now emphasizing the investigation of paper. And this Bible-related paper is uh, one of the very good example, one category uh, to explain Asian paper exported to Europe and printed and then came back to uh, Asia. Uh, this uh, is one of the examples. And this is uh, Zibold Flora Japonica. Though 100 years, uh, it's not always open, so very beautiful, very clearly kept the original color. Uh, this tree is also animals, insects, uh, and, and uh, other uh, natural things. 
Uh, this is George Chinnery's landscape of Macau. Uh, here's the end of 18th century to early 19th century. And uh, George Chinnery's uh, painting of Hokwa, it's a Chinese uh, Mandarin merchant, is very famous. The, the painting is now in Hong Kong Shanghai Bank head office in Hong Kong. And George Chinnery uh, left more than 2,000 uh, colored and uh, pencils and some descents and some uh, completed one. And Morrison corrected. And this is a very important a sort of Western style of painting on Asia. And then, like Chinese painters in Kuantung, uh, modeled Western painting and then uh, draw many relevant painting to export to, 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 to the West. This kind of industry is also uh, worked in, in uh, Chongsan University uh, uh, professors. And this is uh, Macau, uh, George Chinnery, colored and he also painted very detailed uh, a sort of uh, temple uh, or shrine uh, or a Chinese temple. And we are trying to digitize and open for further study. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the very famous opium war uh, gunboat uh, or ship nemesis in Opium War uh, in Kwanzhou Bay. Uh, Edward Duncan wrote almost two same painting with slight difference in the particular part. Uh, this one we can see small schooner here. Actually, this schooner shot gun to the Chinese, Chinese ship, and Nemesis is here. But other painting doesn't have this schooner. So Duncan, based on same design, but if such a small schooner as a main player of opium war in the sea battle for, for Chinese junks. Maybe he painted different one by deleting this school, which is uh, in reality uh, the shot was from here. So besides written document, Painting and also maps has a lot of information and also imagination of history. So Morrison Collection left many this kind of contemporaries idea of the uh, many historical incident uh, of uh, historical studies. This is one example and uh, we used this painting almost all textbook, history textbook in Japan. And then uh, introduction of some uh, research department uh, project. Uh, one of them uh, I uh, try to explain uh, a travelogue uh, project. But before that, uh, some general description the currently Toebunko holds more than one million books and other materials on Asia. Chinese language material is 40%, European language occupies 30%, Japanese 20%, other Asian language is 10%. And we have 250 research fellows and almost one third is retired scholars and intellectuals. So that is one very peculiar uh, 
characteristic of the research group of Toyobunko. After retirement, we welcome to join Toyobunko Research Fellow. But so far, very domestic. Sorry, much more international. I, I try to open up this kind of. Uh, of course, no, no payment, but uh, freely use the library uh, as, as usual. Uh, this kind of uh, condition. And then uh, by dividing around 20 research groups, uh, some group are uh, very basic study group, like some period, uh, Professor Shiba Yoshinobu, uh, the director of uh, Toyobunko, uh, holds many years of this uh, socioeconomic history, uh, keywords, uh, study uh, in, in this uh, group project. And others are like paper project and newspaper project, and also divided by area. And though Asia or Toyo Orient, uh, Japan is included. This is one of the uh, peculiar characteristic because Iwasaki collection is mostly on Japan from uh, medieval period of Japanese history, uh, very classical writing and Edo period, ukiyo-e and so on. So these are uh, rough, uh, brief structure, explanation of Toebunko such group. And then one project we <coughs> did uh, we are doing is travelogue project. The issue of east-west relation almost all are done by travelogue. So many writing is uh, we we might recognize almost all of east-west relation are uh, written by travel travelogue style. And in Toyobunko. Uh, 140,000 uh, foreign language book. Among them, we chose uh, 3,600 around. And among Morrison, 17,000. And uh, this number uh, from 24,000 original Morrison collections, number, rough number deduct Morrison pamphlet part. The Morrison pamphlet are uh, not classified as a book. Uh, it's a sort of uh, other, other classification. And then 1,600, around 1,600 we chose. And this is uh, the list of uh, this Travels and Voyages of Toyobunko was compiled in 1963. So we should uh, renew the, uh, this kind of uh, catalog, but based on this catalog, we, we searched the publication of Travelog. And the horizontal is the year of publication. So looking at the year uh, from 19th century, starting 19th century, the number increase, and then uh, particularly uh, maybe on Asia, East Asia, and also Northeast Asia increased. And then entering uh, 20th century, uh, it also continues. And according to the objectives or issues are uh, not precise because travelogue includes many uh, areas. So it's not accurate to, to just classify one book into one uh, objective as nation. But major part of objective uh, is classified here. And then China, this line is overwhelmingly big. 
and then uh, other uh, something like Siberia increase these these area these according to the uh, years Siberia book uh, increased and looking at Southeast Asia uh, this area uh, Burma and other area also from 19th century increased the publishing and then the language sorry in Japanese this is Dutch English French German Germany and Italy Latin Denmark Portuguese Russian Spanish Swedish Norway Hungary uh, Morrison collection includes altogether 17 different languages books uh, this is not all but uh, mostly in Morrison collection and Russian publication collection is enormously important or uh, reflect Morrison's interest of Russia because Morrison period Russia has very uh, strong approach to Northeast Asia so Morrison himself uh, concentrated the observation of Russia so comparatively speaking among general correction the Russian correction is very strong in Morrison correction and then the objective uh, agenda of books are, are horizontal line and again China is uh, most big part and compared to Toyobunko collection and Morrison collection uh, differently Morrison collection overwhelmingly covers China in numbers so Morrison has his own career and interest the China collection is very much important uh, this is a different place of publication and Toyobunko has from 15th century to 20th century collection and by allocating the publication place it is very interesting uh, starting from Europe or Northern Europe and then move to England uh, these are different tendency according to period and also according to objective uh, but finally uh, England occupy very uh, here is United Kingdom UK is a large number in every area of publication by classifying these uh, nature of the each books, individual books, we try to trace uh, by choosing some keywords and then these keywords uh, by inputting uh, some uh, database and then uh, according to the period and according to the area these keywords appear frequently or uh, appeared and disappeared and this uh, timing or uh, this transformation through Morrison correction we on the one hand we try to know the idea of Morrison's perception or perspective on Asia and at the same time through his correction we try to study his period so uh, looking indirect uh, without directly enter his diary and papers uh, letters looking indirect but it gave us much wider uh, a sort of 
uh, historical resources and also imagination. Because Morrison's collection is complete, and Morrison himself knows what is the start and what is the end. So this is not a sort of uh, incalculable range of data. Morrison has its own entity, and Morrison has its own idea to collect and keep this collection. So by opening up this collection, we know the a sort of logic of the period and logic of historical logic of the area. So I think we, we should study more uh, the Morrison collection as one, one unit of the period. On the one hand, reflecting Asia, and at the same time, the European perspective or Western perspective on Asia, but also a structure of knowledge of the West as a whole. So we shouldn't, for the people on Asian studies, we should not do just pick up some bits of facts or bits of words from Morrison collection. We need to reconstruct the Morrison's idea of Western knowledge or structure of Western knowledge. By doing so, or by doing so, we could enter the historical meaning. Nowadays, a lot of digitized uh, material are on our hand. Seemingly, it's very unclear what is the start, what is the end, or what is the direction, what is the circulation. But looking at Morrison Collection as a one entity, it is a very good objective for us to, to learn history and to train history, historical thinking. And uh, these uh, sort of statistics helps us and uh, by GIS method, uh, and also by dividing language, Dutch, English, French, German, Italian, and so on. And also the number input to the different size of publication. And China is the largest. And Asia Pacific uh, perspective is the second. And Siberia is rather big. And Central Asia is also very important because his period is on Central Asia, a sort of cultural, international, uh, a sort of competition by finding out historical, archaeological uh, material like Tom Juan. And Morrison, uh, together with Britain and Tibet relation, this diplomatic uh, international relation, he himself interested in this cultural investigation. But he didn't organize very uh, big way, but his a sort of trip entered Central Asia, almost same period of Perio and others from, from Europe. So Morrison play not only, uh, of course, journalist, but also a, a sort of historian's perspective with international cultural competition starting from this, this period. And of course, a strong idea of librarian. Then a sort of conclusion. Uh, so far, I, I couldn't say conclusion, but uh, Morrison Library and our future, or our agenda for, for future. We are now endeavoring the digitization, particularly on Morrison pamphlet. And as I told, 
the part of history already digitized and upload on our URL. And we are continuing uh, digitization of Morrison pamphlet because those scattered, but it, it creates a very important image of the period and also the Morrison spirit, a very good expression in Morrison pamphlet to find out his spirit, to, to challenge and to try to find out the, how to say, clue of the situation. And then we are thinking research database. A database is now enormous all over the world. But we are putting research means not only database of source materials. We try to put different category of uh, historical record, like uh, photographs and uh, paintings, and together with uh, some catalogs or uh, contents and other method or tool to enter in the original source materials. So by combining the source materials and research result, and by putting in between some tools to connect each other, try to rather easy to enter the newcomers for Morrison Collection and Asian Studies. Because for me, uh, personally, for 100 years, uh, some sort of, not clear, but <coughs> mystifying the precious collection of Morrison <coughs> Collection. But we really need to enter and materialize what is in. And so far, uh, we need more uh, close uh, relation with Australian uh, scholarship to understand his wider background and the history of Australia and Asia relation. And then map and paper is rather horizontally connect each individual research group. Map has many information, but less investigative. And paper is <coughs> not just a paper, but a sort of expression of the period and also the face of culture. The paper studies we are now, in order to preserve the Morrison collection, we are now enhancing. And research on Chinese maritime custom record. This is a sort of new environment, new situation of publication of Chinese maritime custom record by China uh, with Harvard collection connected and published uh, original version. So we are now, we can read the original document, original report. And custom publication covers so widely, not only trade and finance, but also medical report, postal record, and other very individual uh, investigation and report and papers. We, we are now putting this whole Chinese maritime custom publication together with the second generation letters and diaries of uh, custom people as uh, one whole uh, stage of source materials to discuss modern China, modern East Asia, and modern world on 19th century on. And Maritime Custom House uh, 
Maritime Custom also has the office in London to recruit custom people and then uh, negotiate loan issues between uh, Asia and Europe. So like Professor Hans emphasized, Maritime Custom is very globalized or globalization perspective we should study in his book. So it's beyond East and West or East-West relations perspective. Like, for example, Professor Fairbank emphasized the Western impact and Eastern response. This kind of East-West dichotomical uh, sort of interrelation. But we are more a sort of idea of globalization, historical perspective, coming back to Morrison Collection. So as a conclusion, Morrison Collection, though it's 100 years and more old history, but looking at the perspective and different changing pattern of East-West relation and newly developing the historical perspective of globalization. The Morrison Collection will revive in this contemporary agenda. And as China program in 19th century to 20th century, the transformation, the Morrison Collection raise new agenda and some answers to this current world from 20th century to 21st century, a changing world and changing Asia. Thank you very much.